Maddie said, my name is Katie Parada. Um, I have been with VLR for quite some time. I um, think I was the second VLR intern ever. First was Iris Chen, and then there's me. So if you think like, um, you know, like that goes down in history, you know, when we finally have our VLR, like, um, cabin in the woods or like enormous retreat center of happiness. Um, I'll hopefully be on the wall one day. That's what I think of. Anyway, so I have been um, doing social media, not just as a user, but like as a content creator for some time now. Um, I really started in college um, running the social media page for my um, pro-life group because I really wanted to reach people. And then um, and then I got a job running a the social media for a pumpkin patch. Laura knows all about that. Shout out to the Bucks, Corn and Maze. Um, and so, and then uh, I took a uh, took an internship with BLR, which was a huge amount of fun. And now for my job, I spend a lot of time um, trying to preach the gospel through social media. And so, social media is something that we talk about a lot. Um, and I'm just really excited to be here and to share with you some of my experience. Um, as a user and also as someone who is trying to create content for people to receive. Um, so I understand that maybe not every single person in this room has social media or uses it very often, but most of us do. And in, even if you don't use it regularly or you don't have it, um, we all live in a world that's really being shaped by social media and the way that we interact with it. Um, and so even if you don't use it now, you probably will use it at some point. And so um, I think the way that we um, as Christian women interact with this platform can legitimately change the way that people perceive Christianity, the way that they perceive Christian women, um, and how they perceive our faith. Because social media increasingly is becoming the way that we communicate about everything. If you think about like graphs, face-to-face um, -face interactions are going down and social media usage is going up. And so if we really want to be heralds of the gospel and we want to be true disciples of Jesus, we need to really know how to look at this, right? Because we have some people who are like, it's all bad, you know, throw it away. And you have other people being like, this is the greatest thing ever. And so what I'm here to do, hopefully today, is to share with you um, somewhere, some sort of a balance um, in using this. So the first thing I really want to talk about and ground this in is silence. Um, so our God created a world of vast silence. I want to share with you this quote from my, Sean, uh, my friend, Sean uh, Breeden. He shared it with our social media for ID916, which is the organization I work for. Um, and this is what he said, God put so much silence in his creation. Think of the vast areas of the world that are shrouded in silence. On our planet, there are hundreds and millions of square miles of oceans, deserts, and forests, most of which are in relative silence. Not to mention that our galaxy alone of over 200 billion stars is one of over 100 billion galaxies in a vast expanse of silent wonder. I love that, a vast expanse of silent wonder. So I think of like, yes, the cosmos, you think of the Milky Way, and it's the Lord's creation just as much as we are, and it's just utter silence. Like that is what the majority of the world is. And then like zoom into like New York City Times Square, and it's just like tons of noise, right? And it's not that noise is bad, right? Like babies cry, we talk, music is noise. Um, but I think there really is something to see um, that in silence that um, like, Great men and women of history, great saints, have told us that silence is actually the language of God. And Mother Teresa said that. Um, let's see, what was her quote? Oh, yeah. Unless you observe silence, you will never learn to pray. Um, and so as, as beloved revolutionaries, prayer and our relationship with the Lord really needs to come first. And so I really want to look at social media in the context of how does it, interact, how does it affect the way that we interact with the Lord um, and kind of do his will, right? And so personally, um, I think that... Yeah, silence for me has had a huge impact on me. And really, the times that I've felt the Lord most closely and the times that I've really experienced him um, have been in moments of silence. And so I really want to kind of like shroud this whole discussion with the value of silence um, and, and kind of put it in contrast to what social media is doing, right? And it's not like I can say so, social media causes noise, so therefore it's bad, right? I'm like, okay, well, that means we can't talk to each other, we can't go to church, and we can't have families. Like, that's not at all what I'm saying. But I, what I want to say is that um, silence could get in the way, and often does get in the way of our relationship with the Lord because it takes away our silence. Um, so overall, I want to do like a really big picture view of what social media is. So when I'm talking about social media, I'm talking about Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat primarily. I don't know how many of you guys tweet. I don't tweet. 
Um, but I, I actually do through work, so that doesn't count. But I don't use it very often. Um, but basically, these these main platforms that the majority of um, like people in our world actually use. Um, and one of the big picture things I want you to realize is that the creators of these platforms did not create them with you in mind. They're not thinking about your heart. They're not thinking about your purity. They're not thinking about your health and your happiness. They are looking at you as a user that they want to manipulate, basically. And it's not that we can't overcome that, but that's basically why these things are there. They're not thinking, oh, this is great for a high school girl because now they can share their prom pictures, right? Or this is great so people can now announce that they're engaged. That's not why the creators of these platforms created these things in the first place. Um, they're actually, um, it's, it's a product that they want you to consume, right? In the same way that Lay's creates Doritos and uh, DiGiorno creates pizza, right? They're making social media for you to consume. And so I just kind of want to put that out there in, in the way that we view this, because sometimes um, we can just look at it as like, oh, it's there, it must be good. But it is kind of important to think about why it's there in the first place and why it's become such a big part of our lives. Um, so Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat, they make money off of you. Um, and so it's not that that's, that necessarily taints it, but I just want you to know that, um, that like you are your own, you're your own um, like gauge of how much you want to use this thing because no one else is really going to do that for you. And I'm going to get into that in a second. So um, in a way we can think, okay, if we think about social media as something that we can consume, think about other things that we consume. Can anyone name some other things that we consume? Food. Food, okay, so let's say pizza. I just mentioned pizza. Any other things that we consume? Makeup. Makeup. Is what we said, makeup? Yeah, okay. Any other things? Words. TV. Words. Words, okay. So using some of these things as examples, would you say? Clothes. Clothes, right. So let's say um, with pizza, you, you usually order one pizza, right? And so at a certain point, you know when you're out of it, right? Or with makeup, at, if you buy it in quantities, and it comes in a quantity, and then you're out of it, right? Or with clothes, you buy a shirt, right? And then that's something that you have. Um, or some of the other things. Um, or cotton candy, right? You've got a cotton candy machine, but you only have so much stuff to put it in. With social media, though, it's a totally different game because you can go like this until the good Lord comes home, right? <laughs> like you, can, you could literally continue to scroll through feeds all day and all night. And so that's something that we need to like keep in mind when we're approaching this because um, there is like no natural end to social media, but only the end that you put on it. And only it's never going to end until you decide that you're done with it um, for that time that you're on it, or however much you want it to put it in your life. So, unfortunately, you know, like when you're when you're eating, even your body will tell you when you're done. Sometimes our body doesn't even tell us when we're done with social media, right? Um, so, just another point that I wanted to make um, and all of that. So, if we're looking at this, social media is something that um, can be endlessly consumed. Then we really need to create boundaries with it. We really need to create um, ways to interact with it. But overall, I want to talk about like pros and cons. Okay, is there anything good about this thing that we that we interact with and that we kind of I mean, if we're using something on a daily basis, that's something we should think about, right? I mean, think of the other things that you use on a daily basis, like, like a toothbrush. Like, it's so important that we use it every single day, right? Or a hairbrush, or a hair dryer, or whatever we do. Um, socially, in the same way, if it's playing such a big role in our life, I think it's really worth us to look um, and have this discussion as, as a community, but also look inside of our hearts and saying, what, what is this thing that I'm interacting with so much? Because um, you can't, I don't want you to become just like, um, just a consumer and just consume and consume and not think about um, what you're consuming. So, first thing I want to talk about are the pros. There are so many great things about social media. Because social media connects people, right? The Lord has two great commandments. Love me and love your neighbor as yourself, right? And so, anything that can en enable us to communicate better with another person and potentially help us love another person is very, very valuable, right? And so we see um, through social media, you can update people on their birthdays, right? You can wish them someone a happy birthday, or maybe you're gonna find out on Facebook that it's their birthday, but you can go tell them in person, right? Like that's a way that Facebook just helped you potentially love that person better, right? Or someone shares on Facebook, like I love roses, or I love daffodils or something. That is information that you, can, that you take, and then hopefully you can go love that person better through social media, right? So there are definitely some good things um, about social media because they bring people together. Um, one example that I want to share with this, just really random, is my friend Libby Barnes. You can put that picture up. 
Um, so on the left is, um, I'm at the far end of the line, and at the top end of the line is my friend Libby. So our dads were in the military, and we were friends in Texas in like 2002, okay? So now fast forward to like 2006, um, we're friends on Facebook because somehow we found each other. And uh, we found out we were both going to the March for Life, so we met up at the March for Life because of Facebook. If it wasn't for Facebook, you know, I would never have been able to meet Libby again, 2015. Um, like, look at little me, I don't know why I was wearing those yellow shorts, but yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, oh yeah, this was so funny. We took this picture because they were moving to Germany, sad, because there's a military post in Germany. And so my mom was like, let's do a picture of friends around the world. So, like, stand in front of the glow. <laughs> so that's our friends around the world picture. But anyway, yeah, so we had friends around the world and we're still able to connect with them, right? And so, social media is really a tool. It's something that we use to get to another end, right? It's not a, a, an end in and of itself. So in this way, we use the social media tool to go from 2002, right? When I'm like, I don't know, what would I be, like 12? Um, and then we use it as a tool to then lead to a face-to-face -face interaction, right? And hopefully, I was able to love Libby in that way, and we were able to make that um, friendship grow because of the tool that social media was in that, right? Um, so in that way, that's a really good thing. Um, so we can use social media to initiate face-to-face -face interactions, right? We can use it to set up um, events in real life, like this event tonight. How many of you people, how many of you people, how many of us saw it on social media? That's actually how I found out I was giving the talk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm totally joking. Um, but, but we can use it as a tool to set up plans, right? We can use it as a tool to honor people, to remember important things like birthdays and anniversaries. Um, or the first time I posted for BLR on Instagram. Um, but uh, yeah, like it, it can actually be a very helpful thing um, because we can use it to love people. And when we're using it to love people, it's, it's a good tool, okay? Now, unfortunately, you know, we don't always use social media to love people. Sometimes we use it for the opposite. And in that way, um, it can definitely be detrimental. Um, so let's talk about the cons of social media. Um, I think, we often use social media as a way to escape, to escape like an uncomfortable situation or an uncomfortable social uh, dynamic. Um, we use it as a way to escape boredom. Um, we use it as a way to like es escape our own thoughts and our own restlessness. We use it to ignore people. I think we can all think of examples when we've done that. One of the things I really want to highlight is that social media can um, warp our sense of reality um, and it can distort the way that we see the world and what we value, which is a huge deal. When something starts to change what you value, you really should be like, okay, what's going on here? Because that can be good, but it also can be really bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through a list, um, just a very short list of things that we as Be Love Revolutionaries value. And I'm going to have Elizabeth scroll through an Instagram account. Um, full disclosure, I had to spend like 15 to 20 minutes looking for an Instagram account that didn't have a woman that was half naked on it in order to do this. It took me like a legitimate amount of time to, I was like, oh, no, there we go, oh, no. I had to go through like, yeah, dozens and dozens of accounts. So anyway, um, just while I'm reading these words, I would like you um, to think about the pictures that you're seeing and then think about the words that I'm saying, okay? So as Be Love Revolutionaries, we value, can you guys start the list off? What are some things that we value as revolutionaries? The qualities of a revolutionary. What does it look like to be a true revolutionary, a true lover, someone who is his and free in love? Some examples. Kindness, Kindness okay. Happiness. Happiness. Freedom. Freedom. Positivity. Positivity. Boldness. Boldness. Mm. Humbleness. Humbleness. Strength. Strength. And Bert, did you have another? Uh, Laura? The ability to listen. The ability to listen. Ooh, I really need that. Passion. Passion. Com com also passion, but compassion. <laughs> compassion. <laughs> yep, compassion. Courage. Courage, right. Again, we're, we're, we're articulating what it means to be a, a true, strong, beautiful woman, okay? So some things I also wrote down were temperance, diligence. You can just scroll through or look at a couple of different pages. Um, so just, this is what Instagram, uh, this account is putting out of what it means to be a, a, like a true woman, okay? They're trying to, to picture true womanhood here. But a true woman is temperate. She's diligent. She values her family. She has heroic love. 
She has joy. She has peace. She loves self-donation. She's self-sacrificial. She's patient. She's loving. She's giving. She's kind. She's generous. She's other-focused. She is prayerful. She's gracious. She's welcoming. She's hospitable. She's intentional. So I'm not really sure if you guys are seeing a contrast here, but on the other end of things, um, Elizabeth, I also added another slide to your PowerPoint, so if you could go back to that. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can see that the things that I was saying and the images that you saw, there was an imbalance there, right? So there are really these two op opposing viewpoints of what the world is saying is beautiful, what it really means to be a true woman, AKA Mother Teresa, if you can like her, right? A true beloved, beloved revolutionary. And then on the other side is what Instagram says is a true woman, which is what that list said, okay? So if we are soaking in, okay, so this was, this is the truth, this is the Mother Teresa, and then these are the lies, these are the things that Instagram is slowly but surely telling us, right? And it's, it's not saying it outright, which, so it's kind of hidden, right? But as you, as you look through these pictures and you see all of these fashion accounts and all these different um, people who have these perfect lives, um, you're, what you're really doing are, I, I like to think of our hearts as like sponges, and I really would want to challenge you to say, what do you soak your, your heart in more? Do you soak it in those, um, that viewpoint of the world and what it really means to be a strong woman, or do you soak it in the truth, and who's the only person who can tell us truly who we are? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Could have been a little stronger. Um, <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Debbie. Um, but well, I think the largest thing that I have learned with social media um, is that it's not bad, but it can temporarily feed our hunger for Jesus. Jesus is the only one who can give us our validation, right? He's the only one who can tell us who we truly are. He is the only one who can give us our truest sense of self. He's the only one who can truly, deeply, and perfectly love us. He's the only one who can give us the response that we really desire. He's the only one who can actually give us our true selves. Um, and he's the only one who can give us that sense of belonging and the way that our heart loves it. And I really think that every time that we pick up our phones in boredom or you know, in between classes or like you're just trying to pass time, somewhere deep down inside, there is a hunger for Jesus. And everything we do, we're looking for Jesus. And it's not that it's bad, but I think that it's something that we need to realize. And in those moments, when we are just like, okay, I'm bored, or, oh, I posted something, I wonder if I got any responses, or I wonder if anyone liked that or commented it, right? Um, it's not that that's bad, but it can, it can mask the truth of what's actually going on in our heart, which is a desire for true belonging, for true validation, for true response, right? We want a reaction from people. We post something, and then how often do you get on, like, 30 seconds later, 70 seconds later, 120 seconds later, and be like, did anyone like it, you know? Because we want a response, right? We want to say, does anyone love me? Does anyone value me? Does anyone care that I went on vacation or that I puked in the airport, right, Emily? <laughs> you didn't share about that, but you should have. It would have been cute. No. Um, but, but really, we, we're looking for something, and we're trying to fill a hunger that, that only the Lord can fill, okay? And so I think as we look at social media and the way that we use it, especially as, as we are like our own content generators, we're posting things, um, I want to challenge you to ask yourself why. And you can have good motives, right? You can have like, I, I when I'm thinking about like my friend Adora, like posting on her wall that I love her so much. And hopefully, you know, hopefully she's not having a bad day, but if she's having a bad day, she gets on there and she sees a message from me, you know, a public declaration of my love, hopefully she's gonna feel loved, right? And that's a good thing. Um, but if I'm getting on, uh, so yeah, that's a good intention. So I want to go through some of those motivations of why we do what we do on social media. Um, some are good and some are bad. Um, I just want to, want to challenge you to think about the next time you're going to do something like this. Just see what is your own motivation in your heart. Why are you doing what you're doing? Some of it's good, some of it's bad. So I challenge you to ask yourself, why do I post? Why do I comment? Why do I like? Why do I need to share so many details of my life? Why do I need to share those details of my life? Am I doing it to make myself look good? Am I doing it to make a friend jealous? 
Am I doing it to show someone that I hung out with a certain friend? Am I doing it to share good news with family and friends? Am I doing it to increase my own sense of worth or my reputation? Am I looking for validation? Am I trying to make my life look good? Am I trying to make my life look holy? We all know those prayer times posts. About to pray with Jesus and like, put your phone away though. Um, <laughs> how do I, are you, are you posting to make your life look perfect? To make your, um, the, the guy that you like, you know, look really good? Um, are you trying to share details that someone doesn't know and that they really shouldn't know, but, and they wouldn't normally know, but then if you share them, then everyone knows. And it's like, know, we know those sorts of things. Um, if, if we're doing it out of, a, out of an emptiness, if you've seen yourself, any of sort of that emptiness, um, that's not the end of the world, right? We all have that emptiness. We all have those needs to be validated and to be loved and to accept it. But we have to realize that looking at social media and looking for that validation in social media is like putting a Band-Aid on a gaping wound, right? It, it actually makes the problem worse. Um, it doesn't make it better. And so there definitely are some really good reasons to use social media. I hope that um, slowly but surely you can see those motivations move you towards using social media as a way to love as a way to encourage, as a way to validate um, the people around you and to love them. Um, and yeah, it's so ironic because like, if you think about a social event, like it's really about a group, right? It's really about a, a group of people coming together and having a good time together. If you think about social media, it really can be so much about you, right? It's your name, your profile, everything you love, all of your pretty pictures. It's just like a me page. Um, and it's not that there's anything wrong with you, but if it starts to change the way you view the world, it's like, Ooh, can I share this on the me page? Is this part of the me vision of myself? Or is this part of like the, the me um, platform, my own me portfolio, you know? Um, that can really alter the way that we love because um, it can inhibit us from really loving the person next to us because we're too focused on ourselves. Um, so I'd like to share some of my own personal experience um, with social media and using it. Um, so one day I was sitting on my bed um, and my sister Joe and I uh, live in the same house, which is a huge gift. Uh, so she's two years younger than me, and I was like putting away laundry, and she was sitting on my bed on my phone, just scrolling through my Instagram, and she's like, Katie, oh my gosh, do you feel like a terrible person every time you get off your Instagram? I was like, well, I guess I don't feel like super great about myself. She's like, Katie, all of the blogs that you follow are like way too airbrushed. Like, these people are not real. Like, you follow all of these blogs that just make me feel like total crap, so I don't know why you're doing this. She's like, could you, could you go through and like unfollow this one and unfollow? I was like, you can go ahead. So she did, and then I did, and she, and we sat there, and she was like, Katie, you don't need to see that. Katie, you don't need to see that. She's like, this isn't even modest. Why are you looking at that? I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. Um, but I realized that I had just followed like, oh, cute outfit. I'm gonna follow that page. Oh, cute outfit. Follow that page. That the vast majority of my account was really not my friends, which is what I got an Instagram for. Um, it was to interact with my friends, and I wasn't doing that. I was filling my little vision of the world with all of these pages that told me how to be this certain type of person and look a certain way and I wasn't seeing my friends and I was actually hurting myself because I was exposing myself to um, content that just was not uplifting. I walked away not feeling like I could do it, right? Like I could be a better person, that I could continue to grow and to love and to, to continue on my journey towards the Lord. Um, and so we'll get into um, some of those boundaries in a second. but. Um, like I said, I work for an organization where I do social media. And when I first started with um, this organization, ID916, and I started an Instagram account, I could basically honestly say that for a while I was pretty addicted to checking notifications. Um, and the more that people have done research on social media, and actually the more that the people who've created social media have been um, really open about this, they've said that they have done um, research when they were creating these different platforms, Instagram, um, uh, Facebook and Snapchat, and they studied our um, the way that our brain works and the release of dopamine, which is the happy chemical. Um, and so basically they, they've created these uh, circuits, and so when we get a notification, it pops up in a way and it like registers a certain thing in our brain where it gives us a little dopamine hit. It's, it's kind of like doing a little drug, which there are other things um, that use dopamine. It's like a happy chemical, like when you have a really happy experience or you're with someone you love. Um, but I think that we kind of just, we need to be aware of that, that there is a, there's a reason why we love it so much. There's a reason why uh, we love to see notifications pop up on our phone or even text messages 
um, because it was actually created to get us to respond to it, um, which means we don't need to respond to it, um, which we'll talk about soon. So when I first started work, um, I would be putting out these videos, putting out uh, posts on Facebook and Instagram, and I would just get so excited about checking notifications. Like when I would get home, I would be like, oh my gosh, I wonder if anyone liked that thing we did today. So I didn't get my phone and I'm scrolling, you know? And then like right before I go to bed, I'm like, oh, I should get on and see if anyone else liked it, you know? And then I sleep. And then I wake up in the morning, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if anyone else saw it during the night, you know? And I was checking it like, I would check it like for five or 10 minutes, like during, in between each thing, I'd like, get to someone's house and then on the way in I'd be like, oh, we just posted a new thing, let me see if anyone posted. Because I, I just became like so addicted to the response that I was getting. I was so excited that someone was gonna respond to something that I had did, that I had did, that I had done. Um, and so, and so it really, I felt like came to kind of tipping point, um, like last fall, like around like end of summer, where I was realizing more and more when I wasn't at work, I was on my phone and I was even using like my own personal account more because I, had like broken down my self-discipline um, when it came to using social media. And so I would use social media when I was walking to and from, I'd just kind of get on and browse. Um, I'd use social, I'd get on, I'd like open up my phone um, and just get on an account, just look. Like I had nothing that I was actually doing. Um, I would just kind of like look, how many people like this? How many people come to on this? Um, I never like open it up and be like, I need to communicate with this person to set up a date so that we can hang out and we can see each other face to face, right? Like happy trend. When I'm just checking, I'm getting out to scroll, it's a bad trend, it just comes back to me and it never ends. Um, and so, it was like last fall where I really realized that when I was hanging out with people, when I was with my family, um, most of the time, it was like, okay, it's so good to see you. I'm like, yeah, it's so great to see you guys too. Like, oh, I'm so special because I'm checking notifications, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I just, I felt like I really um, couldn't, I couldn't keep, like boundaries on when I would use it and when I wouldn't use it. Um, especially at night when I was just kind of like, oh, gotta like unwind, I deserve some just like downtime, you know? So I'd sit there and it would be like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then there goes my night, and I was like, I was gonna get to bed tonight, what happened? That's weird. And then the next time, I'm like, oh, I just really need to unwind, let me just get on and scroll through, you know? And then it's been like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and I'm like, where did the time go? And it, I just created these really bad cycles in my life to a point where, I just wasn't getting to bed, you know, and then every morning it's hard to get up, you know, and it's like, I didn't have enough discipline with myself to say, I'm not checking it, I'm done with it, and goodbye, you know, like, because really, like, the phone is in your hand, like, I, I know you guys have parents in your own house, but my mom is not living with me, she's not going to tell me, except for when I'm at my house, thank you, um, you know, like, you should put your phone down, and so often we um, don't realize that, that in this area, it's, we have the power to decide how we're using it and how we're not. Um, so for myself over the last fall, um, yeah, I, there was just like a one particular time where I was at my parents' house and like my siblings were running around and I was like on my phone and then I went and did something with them and then I went back to my phone and then I went and did something. And it was really like I was taking a break from my phone to go see them instead of taking a break from them to just check my phone. And once I felt like there was like a change in the balance, I was like, okay, this has to stop. Um, and thankfully, God is good, always is good. Um, he um, allowed like a huge social media discussion to come up at my work where we were talking about like how do we help other people have boundaries. I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> um, and so we created a teaching of sorts on how to um, have boundaries and thankfully I've been trained to live that out and, um, and get my sleep schedule back on, uh, my sleep back on schedule, Keep my, get my sleep schedule back. Um, and so I really want to talk about some of those things that we um, decided because I felt that the less time that I interacted with social media, the less time that I just was there browsing or posting or just even like mentally obsessing about like, this is a great picture, this would be a great picture, I know what this is, what the caption would be, and I'd be like, why are you doing it, Katie? Like, you're not, you're not actually interacting with the world, you are creating a virtual reality, like a, a fake space that doesn't exist, um, and that's becoming realer than what is physically, literally right in front of you. Um, and so I'm slowly but surely learning this and trying to um, really engage with the world in, in a real way and not use it because we're actually like using circumstances to get pretty pictures um, when we are just doing things to take a picture. Use flash. So let's talk about the boundaries that the Lord has placed in my life and the um, lives of some of my coworkers in order to um, to really find balance because if if our hearts are really our sponges and we really do take in as much as we 
think that we don't, and as much as we think we're immune to it, uh, we really do take in the messages that um, we see on social media um, if we don't use it in the right way. Um, so let's head into some of those boundaries. So what I've done is I've written some of these boundaries on note cards. I'm gonna have you guys come up and pull them out one at a time. So first hand, I saw you first. <laughs> You're also right in front of me, so. Um, here, let me mix these up. It's like um, a lottery, except for better, because it's gonna bring you closer to Jesus. <laughs> okay, what's the boundary? Do not use social media. Wait, last That's thing. Last thing at night. Okay. Sorry, I can't remember. No, my handwriting's messy. Thank you. Um, so, any reasons why it would make sense not to use social media last thing at night? Oh, yeah. Pre prevents you from going to sleep. Prevents you from going to sleep. And actually, they have done a lot of studies on this. And uh, there's this thing called sleep hygiene, which I just found out about. And if, like, literally, okay, think of this as like a light bulb. It's basically a light bulb that you're putting in your face. <laughs> Do you think it's gonna be easy to then close your eyes and, <laughs> and uh, enter into the darkness of sleep when you've just been staring at a light bulb? It's actually really bad for your eyes. Um, I totally forget what the name is, but there's like, when you turn off your lights at night, you know, when you start to wind down, you start to turn down the lights, you're teaching your body um, to, to start going to sleep. Um, and like in the olden days, before we had light bulbs, um, that was the sign that it was time to go to sleep. As the sun goes down and your body goes, oh, it's time to go to sleep now because it's getting dark. But how is your body ever going to know to go to sleep when you're staring at a light bulb? Just print that out. Okay, <laughs> next thing. Sophia. Sophia Pachillo. Most Italian name ever. Um, get a usage tracking app. Ooh, uh, get a usage tracking app. Any ideas why that would be helpful? monitor how much you're using like so you can see like how many hours you're using hours yeah exactly um, great great Sarah yeah so I opened um, around this time last fall I started using a usage tracker app and um, I had opened my phone the first day I got it like 150 times or something like that I was like how on God's green earth was I opening my phone and it wasn't just you know Instagram it was like gotta make a phone call gotta text my mom back that's always really important um, or got to um, I don't know what else is important got to use the calculator you know but it really taught me a lot about myself that I was literally doing this phone pickup swipe over a hundred times a day so also you can get apps just look up a um, app like Usage Tracker. You can do it on Android and um, iPhones. It's really helpful. It'll tell you how long you spend on Instagram, how long you spend on Facebook, how long you spend on Snapchat. Um, and it's not that it's supposed to be like a condemning thing, but it, it's really eye-opening to see, oh my gosh, like I spent five minutes here and 10 minutes there and 15 minutes there. And, Where did my time go today? You know, oh, I, I never have enough time to do what I need to get done. Like, oh, because you spent 45 minutes on Snapchat. You know? So very eye-opening thing. If you do have a smartphone, Amber, do you want to come up? Yeah. See how far it's gone down since you first picked up your phone. Oh no, like it breaks it down to the settings. Oh, it does. It's like what percentage really? of your battery is going towards yeah. what app? There you go. Yeah. See how long. Like, like yeah. yeah, just learn about how you use like it. The last seven like know thyself, right? Okay, who wants to pull the next one? <laughs> Abby. Do not sleep with your phone near your bed. Oh. Any ideas why that would be a helpful thing? Answer. Potentially, we don't know. I don't know. Also, like, don't have that temptation to pick up your phone if you're like, temptation. Yes, it's such a temptation. Honestly, one of the best purchases I've ever made in my life was buying a seven dollar alarm clock at Target because we're always like, we need our phone because it's our alarm clock. It's not worth it. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah, go ahead, Emily. Um, if you're a really heavy sleeper and you like have your phone in your bed, it can get like rumpled up in the covers and you don't hear your alarm and you wake up late all the time. <laughs> in my bed and like I'd wake up in the middle of the night and be like, oh man, I wonder what so so is doing, you know? And it's, yeah. it's 3 a.m. Katie, that's not okay. <laughs> um, okay, next one. Who wants to pull another boundary? Mary? Is it like 2.50? I'm just kidding. Okay, what is it? Do not use your phone while driving. Ooh, yeah, that's just obvious, but honestly, how many times you're driving on the highway and you look over at the other cars and they're like, like we don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I feel like I don't need to say anything more about that. Just is what it is. I 
Debbie? Not just the highway, like just any. Oh, uh, yeah. Not just highway. Please. Yeah, please do not use your phone while driving. So, how about period? Not at stoplights, not at slowdowns, just never. How about just never, okay? Honestly, it's not worth it. The text can wait. It really, really can. And that post can wait, and even if it's some a big pictures or engagement announcement, it literally can wait. Because um, your life is worth it, okay? It's all good? Okay, next one. Lizzie, right? Take photos on your phone um, and not on an app. Okay, so this is one way that I have found. Okay, so take photos on your phone and not uh, on your phone's real camera, not on your app, not in an app. Um, because I have found that when I take a photo in an app, then I want to post it, then I want to share it, then I want to put a cute caption on it. But if you're like in a moment, say if it's like prom pictures or like you are out at the park or you're getting dinner with your family, like if you were to just like snap a picture and put your phone away, it was like, that was a great moment, I wanna capture it. And then there is no further like interaction that comes out of that, right? It's not pulling you out of that moment for more than a second. Because it's not bad to wanna take a picture, right? It's, it's a great thing that we're able to capture these moments. Um, but a way to kind of detach the, oh, this moment is so beautiful, and it's so ironic. Like we have beautiful moments and our reaction to it is like, let me turn away from it and stare at a screen, you know? It's like, you know, if there's something beautiful going on, you capture it, but then stay in that beautiful moment, you know? Make sense? Okay, yeah. a couple more. Um, anyone? Yeah. Oh, did you already do it? Yeah. Oh, go cool. stay down there. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. Okay. Unfollow negative content. Woo! Number one. Seriously. If you see an account that's like, oh, you don't, you don't like when you see it, you're just like, oh, I'm not that. Just don't follow them. You, you don't need them in your life. Like you really, really do not need them in your life. You are the gatekeeper of what you see and what you don't see, okay? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, someone else? Want to pull one? Yeah. Judah. <laughs> Turn off your push notifications. <gasps> oh my gosh, this has been a life changer, guys. Okay, how many times did you get on your phone to check the date of something? Or get on your phone to use the calculator, mm -hmm. that's legitimate. Or use the phone to like text someone, oh, I'm on my way, and then Facebook notification, and then you get on Facebook, and then you're like, oh, someone else commented on it, you click on their page, and then you end up somewhere else, and they put your phone down, and you're like, why did I even pick it up in the first place? Or, oh, I needed to do, use my calculator, you know? Because you saw a push notification, right? Or you get on to, yeah, do something legitimate, and then you're like, oh, so-and-so snapped me, I need to see it right now. You wouldn't know that they snapped you unless you had the push notification. And so if you want to have boundaries and you want to kind of detach yourself and you want to be in control, um, just turn them off. And when you have time, when it's appropriate, you can get on Snapchat. Check your Snapchat if you have Snapchat. Um, but it but puts you in charge. If you are ruled by the notifications, it's just going to suck you in every time you look at your phone. Unless you have like super great willpower, which praise God if you do, that is such a gift. And it's something that's learned. Um, but if you are not able to, if you can just admit that to yourself, that every time you look at your phone um, and you realize that you get distracted by push notifications, just turn them off. You don't need them, it's really easy. It'll take you two seconds and it'll save you years of your life, okay? <laughs> Other boundaries, I have a couple more left. Some girls in the back. Yes, come on. Hey, Ooh, good um, Never use social media before you pray. Okay, again, going back to our hearts being sponges um, and our, our way of viewing ourselves and viewing the world, um, being very kind of like fresh every day, right? Every day we start anew, right? Every day the Lord gives us another chance to love, to serve, to be um, his, be free, and be loved, right? And if the first thing we do right when we get out of bed, or maybe even sometimes when we're still in bed, is listening to this big megaphone voice of the world saying, you need to have this, you need to have that, you need to do this, and you're like, Oh my gosh, I already failed. Like, I'm already behind before you even get out of bed, right? But if the first thing that you're doing, or one of the first things you're doing in the day, is taking silence, the way that the Lord created the world, um, and really meeting the Lord, and having Him tell you first who you are, um, and returning to those truths. I mean, if you study the Bible, it's constantly like, you forgot. It's like, remember, like the Lord says in the Old Testament, remember, remember, remember. And then the New Testament, you forgot, you forgot, you forgot. <laughs> um, honestly, like, it is so there. Um, but like, so often we forget. 
who we are. We forget what the Lord's done for us. We forget his truth. Um, and so in, in the morning, it's a perfect time to do that. Um, and so even, yeah, you, I think it really is a good practice to pray in the morning. Um, but if you don't pray in the morning, don't get on social media. And if you are going to get on social media, do it after you pray. Um, because the first thing that you receive, that first thing that you um, place in your heart that day should not be lies. It should be the truth. Okay? Amen. Woo! All right. Two more. I saw that hand back there. Do not use your phone in front of people. Yeah, okay, so that one is, there are some uh, there are some necessary ways that you might have to use your phone, but generally, if you're just scrolling, if you're just getting on, this is probably super obvious to you, but we still do it. Um, the, it's just kind of ironic. Like, the, the role of social media is to make you a better friend, is to make you a better lover, it's to make you a better um, revolutionary, but yet, when you're standing there in front of someone to love and to be a friend to, you're just like, I'm oh, sorry, like, this creator is more important than you. You know, it's like, it is, it's, it's not just neutral, it's bad. Like, it actually takes you away from um, what the, the tool is anyway, right? It's like you're sitting there with a nail and a hammer and you're using the nail to make a smoothie. It's like, oh, sorry, nail, there's nothing to do about that. It's like, you're using the tool for the wrong thing. It's actually not making a smoothie. It's, I don't know, that's a really bad analogy, but... <laughs> getting in the way of that, it's just, it's like using a hammer to make you guys, okay? <laughs> just trust me on that one. <laughs> okay, I think someone put that one back. Um, the other one is don't use um, social media first thing in the morning. So, um, yeah, so those are some things that I have been doing um, in my life in order to create boundaries with this and to, um, to really use it in the way that it was int intended to use or the way that we can intend to use it, um, which is to communicate with people, to love people, to praise the Lord for things, to thank um, the Lord for things, um, to to witness to the work he's done in your life. You can do those things on social media. Um, but at the end of the day, it is something that we need to take seriously, and it's something that we need to uh, spend some time with and reflect on. If you have a phone, um, to really think about how do you use it, what are your motivations, are you hungry for Jesus when you're picking up your phone? Yes, you are. Um, and is, is it something that's helping you become holy, or is it something that's inhibiting you from becoming holy? Thank you.